So pretty much exactly a year ago, I made a video talking about the renewable energy stocks I liked going into 2021. And now it's a full year later, so I'm going to talk about the same stocks I did in that video, but give an update as these were the stocks that I believed in last year, and then today I'm going to be talking about how I feel about them today. They've kind of gone in different directions. We have a couple that had pretty solid gains in 2021, and a lot of them are in significant discounts. So we're going to be talking about that. Renewables are in a fantastic spot for long-term investments. When you look at the amount of countries that have pledged to be net zero when it comes to carbon emissions by 2050, I'll put up a graphic now that have the countries that have put it into law and some that have uh, it's pretty close to being committed to. You have all of these um, electric vehicle companies coming out. You have the normal car companies saying that they're going to get rid of the combustion engine by 2030. And we just have companies and this switch towards renewable energy. And that's why I think this is the most exciting space to be investing in right now. So in this video, I have it broken down into a couple types of companies when it goes to renewable energy. I have a solar stock. I have a hydrogen power cell company. Um, I have two just kind of general storage and generation type companies that have portfolios in hydro, um, hydrogen, solar, wind. Um, and then finally, we have the, the building of the wind turbine. So I have a nice spread of options when it comes to renewables. These aren't the only options out there, so be sure to leave your guys' favorite renewable energy stocks in the comment section down below. Also got to say, this is not financial advice, and I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video and comment down below. So the first stock, not directly a renewable energy stock with NIO, ticker symbol NIO, which is down 49% in the past year. But the reason I decided to add to this list last year was that one of the main areas that are going to benefit from the switch to renewables are the car companies. And something like a NIO that is the top uh, EV company in China is a great spot to take advantage of that. So NIO, as I mentioned, is down 50%. The main reason behind this is that they were up 1,000% in 2020. NIO and most of the other EV companies kind of followed the trajectory that Tesla set out. And as Tesla went up, all of the other EV companies just kind of went along with it. But unlike some of the other EV companies that you know don't have the deliverables, um, NIO has some fantastic numbers. And so I wanted to talk about some of the things that really excite me when I look at NIO going forward, because even though it is at this significant discount, there are some really attractive things. When you look at the five year, you can see that crazy rise that happened. Um, but I think the most exciting thing when it comes to deliveries, NEO has been incredibly stable when uh, looking at their, their amount of deliveries for every month. Every year they put out their number um, and you've pretty much seen growth in almost every, every month and that their number for uh, the year of 2021 through November was almost 81,000 delivered cars. So they've seen very nice growth. And I think the most exciting thing is that they just continue to increase all of their their metrics when it comes to deliverables, revenue. Their expected revenue growth for the next year is 74%. This is a company that has decently high revenue already, but a 74% increase in 2022 uh, with their expected revenue of just shy of $10 billion. That is insane. Some people can point out that it is not a profitable company, but when you look at their net losses by quarter, you can see that it's gotten a lot better. When you look at it, let's see, 2018, they lost, what is it, $3.4 billion, then it went down to 1.6, and then in 2020, uh, they lost $860 million. And when you look at a company like this that is losing a lot of money, you have to ask, where are they getting the cash to withstand this amount of time if they're losing money? With the crazy rise that the stock saw in 2020, one of the ways that they took advantage of that is that they had a share offering for $2 billion. And when you look at how expensive the share price was at that point, it was a really good decision to do that. So deliveries continue to increase over time. You could say that it still has a pretty high valuation, even though it is uh, down 50%. But they just came out with their NEO day, which is the kind of their investor day. They just announced a sedan that has a thousand kilometer range. And NEO just seems to be in a great spot for a long-term investment. You do have some of the risks associated with a company being in China. But when I look at NEO, I think it's very attractive and I think it's a great way to take advantage of the boom of renewable energy stocks. Next, we're gonna to go to probably my favorite renewable energy stock out there with Brookfield Renewable, ticker symbol BEP. I will note that there is a BEPC, which is the corporate side of it. They're interchangeable one for one. I'm sure there's some reasons why you'd like one over the other, but I'm just gonna talk about BEP. BEP is a company that has a pretty diversified portfolio when it comes to renewables. When you look at their energy sources, most of it does come from hydroelectric, which when we're talking about the rest of the companies on this list, 
Hydroelectric is not one that I see talked about very often. So it's 49% of their energy sources. And when you look at their region split, most of it is in North America, but they do have a presence in Latin America and Europe and a small presence, 2% of their generation comes from, uh, from Asia. One of the things that's super exciting about BEP is that it has outperformed the stock market since it's IPO'd in 2005. Since 2005, the S&P 500 has uh, averaged 10.7%, which we talk about in pretty much every video, and BEP is uh, up 13.3%. So during that time, it has outperformed it on an annualized basis. And even though it is down uh, in the past year 28%, I still love the long-term potential of BEP. When you look at the recent news events, they recently got upgraded to sector outperform and set a price target for $40 and seeing that it's at just shy of $34, that's a nice, nice boost. When you look at BEP, yes, you have the stability of beating the S&P 500 since 2005, but I think the probably the safest thing about them is most of their, their funds that they're bringing in for revenue is based off of contracts and their average contract length is around 14 years. What this means is you have very predictable revenue and you're not gonna have a quarter where things just kind of disappear. You have a very long maturity when it comes to these contracts that's gonna bring in reliable revenue. And so when you look at their funds from operations, it was up, uh, what, 32% from the same period year over year, up to $210 million. BEP is one of my favorite renewable energy stocks out there. They do pay a very nice dividend at sitting, what is it, three point, I think it's like 3.2%. There has been some discussion about if they're gonna be able to pay that out reliably in the future. But when you look at a company like BEP and the expected growth in the renewable energy sector, the fact that most of their money is coming from contracts, which are very stable with the money they're bringing in, I have no worries that their dividend is gonna be cut anytime soon. So BEP, I like it because it's reliable, has the focus on hydroelectric, which you don't see with a lot of renewable energy companies out there, and the dividend, that's pretty solid. Next, we're gonna to go to a very similar stock when you look at the reasons why I like it, and that's with NextEra Energy, ticker symbol NEE, which is up 4% in the past year. As I mentioned in my last video where I talked about them, NextEra is what I hope Brookfield Renewable will be in the future. It is just as reliable, but it doesn't have as much of the chop uh, that Brookfield has, and it's just been more stable overall. When you look at its return since it IPO'd in 1995, it's up 15.3% compared to the S&P 500 at 102 so when BEP is mainly focused on hydroelectric, the really stable part about NextEra is that they own FPL, which is Florida Power and Light. What this allows them to do is they have the infrastructure to take advantage of not only harnessing the renewable energy part of their business, but also providing it to customers. And that's one of the difficulties that we see with a lot of companies that don't have the vertical integration. You have companies that make solar panels, but they don't sell them. You have companies that have the wind turbines, but don't harness the power and are able to store it. NextEra is able to do all of that, and with their contract growth, it's looking very good for them going forward. When you look at their expected growth for contracts, in 2021, 2022, their total contracts is 11,602, and the expectations for 2021 to 2024 is upwards of 30,000. So when you see a company like this that has the, the stability of the past returns, plus you can see these growth metrics that they're estimating, makes me very excited. The company does put out 45,500 megawatts of net generating capacity, and this graphic also has a 945% shareholder return over the last 15 years. This is a company that's gonna be doing a lot with solar being down in Florida, and as I mentioned, they're gonna be able to provide uh, the renewable energy to actual customers. So that's why I really like NextEra, ticker symbol NEE. Next, we're gonna go to First Solar, ticker symbol FSLR, which is down 19% in the past year. And then the solar ETF TAN, which is what I personally pick because I find it very difficult to fully understand the solar space is down 37%. So when the overall ETF that follows the solar industry is doing worse than you, things are going pretty well. First Solar has kind of had a whirlwind of a history. It was one of the first major US solar companies. They started producing their solar panels. China got involved, pushed the price down and priced them out. Um, but since then, the overall price has gone down and they've really simplified their business. And I talk about this with General Electric that when you simplify your business and focus on what you're really good at, I think good things happen and that's what we're seeing with First Solar. So in the past five years, it is up 135%. So it does have the past successes even though the past year doesn't look amazing. First Solar has transitioned from trying to be involved with the entire solar process of the producing, 
uh, the solar panels to generating power to selling it to consumers and now they're mainly focusing on the manufacturing part of their business and I'm not 100% sure if that is the right move for them, but I do like them simplifying their business and focusing on exactly what they're good at. And so we've seen this as an example. Uh, in the past year, they passed off a 10 gigawatt project to focus more on manufacturing and less on the active project management. At this point, they have been expanding their manufacturing capacity. They have uh, multiple plants in Ohio. Um, the first one was 3.3 gigawatts, and now they're up to six gigawatts. And they've built uh, plants in Vietnam and I think in Korea potentially. So they do have an international presence and they are one of the largest producers. They are the US's largest producer of solar panels. And as the solar industry continues to take off, as we expect to see tax credits and incentives for uh, residential solar panels, I expect the demand for solar to continue to go up. And while I don't fully understand the solar market and that's why I personally picked TAN, I think if I had to pick an individual stock for solar, I'd go with First Solar, ticker symbol FSLR. Let's continue it with plug power, ticker symbol PLUG, down 64% in the past year. This is a really interesting uh, company to talk about because plug has been around for multiple decades at this point. The biggest hit that I've always brought up is that they've never been profitable in their entire history. Hydrogen power is an energy source that is not fully utilized yet. I'll put up a graphic that shows why hydrogen is green. You're taking it from, from water instead of coal or natural gas, which is methane, CH4. And that's why it's considered a green uh, energy uh, platform. When you look at hydrogen power right now, it's only 0.02% of the world energy use right now. And that's expected to grow significantly in places uh, like public transit. Plug power in the past is creating fuel cells mainly for forklifts. But now they started to expand into more vehicles. And this is going to allow them to reach more people and hopefully become profitable in the future. The hydrogen market is expected to grow significantly uh, at 43.8% long-term forecast for compound annual growth to 2030. That is a huge number and plug power is pretty much the leader in the world in hydrogen fuel cells right now. And I expect them to do very well with that. There have been some interesting stories where their revenue was offset by a major loss that they had. And the reason behind that is they had incentives with a contract that they had with Amazon that would give them warrants or the ability, think of them like option contracts, gives them the ability to buy a stock at a certain price. And it was an incentive for buying uh, their forklifts and their power cells. That sounds great until you remember, I'll put up the chart for the five year, that Plug Power was one of the stocks that took off in 2020 when you had these speculative stocks just go sky high. What this meant is that Plug had to sell them a bunch of shares that were significantly below the current asking price. And so this was a great deal for Amazon, not so great for Plug Power. And so we're at the point now where they have uh, produced 50,000 fuel cells and they can, are hoping to produce 50% of their own hydrogen by 2024. The future does look bright for hydrogen and Plug Power overall. They just have been so choppy in the past that if I was gonna be buying into Plug, I would take it pretty small and I would not be worried about the weekly, the weekly moves. This is a stock that is super volatile. So you can have weeks where it can be up or down 10%. The history has shown in the past year that it has done well and has been able to hold its value decently well as the hydrogen market is expected to grow from the 0.02% um, of the world uh, fuel sources. Plug power should be in a good spot to take advantage of that. From their last earnings report, they had the uh, company's highest revenue at $144 million, up 34% year over year, and they raised their revenue guidance for 2022. So things look positive for Plug Power right now. It's just the volatility is a little spooky. Hydrogen is still a long way away from being a major fuel source, but they do have some deals uh, where they're going to be creating uh, buses in Korea, I believe. Plug Power is in an interesting spot right now, and we'll see where it goes in the future. But for right now, that is my hydrogen play. Then we're going to finish off the video with my classic General Electric ticker symbol GE. The reason why I'm putting this on this list is that in 2024, it's going to be breaking off into three different publicly traded companies with GE Healthcare, GE Power, and GE Aviation. In the GE Power part of their business, they're going to have the renewable aspect of their business, which I'm really excited about. So soon we're going to be able to invest specifically in the power part of their business. And that's why I wanted to talk about it in this video. Looking at GE's renewable part of their business, it is not profitable right now. 
that's pretty much expected. When you're in the infancy of the switching of these energy sources, you're gonna have a lot of money put into research and development, a lot of marketing, until things really take off. And the thing that GE is really good at is creating wind turbines. And as of right now, they have the world's largest. Um, and their orders continue to go up. And that's what we just wanna see at this point. Profitability is something we'll look at in the future, but right now we wanna see the increases uh, in the orders. So looking at the orders from the most recent earnings report, uh, the wind turbines were up to 1,089, up from 953 a year ago. That's what we like to see. It is down year over year, but the trajectory that I'm seeing, wind turbines are gonna be a huge part um, of energy generation in the future. The thing that we really need GE to break into is the offshore market. Right now it's dominated by two other competitors and GE has gotten into it working uh, and providing the those largest turbines that I mentioned for the world's um, largest offshore wind turbine bank, which is off of the European coast. And so this is gonna be a huge way that GE can, can boost that part of their business. I think without it, they can probably still do all right with the onshore. They did have a recent contract uh, in March, 2021 for onshore uh, turbines, but the offshore market is where the money is gonna be made. And I think that's where GE with their massive and powerful turbines are gonna do really well. The rest of their business, I'm fine, but I just wanted to specifically talk about the renewable part of their business because that's what excites me the most. GE is a long way from being able to focus primarily on renewables to take advantage of you know, the expected boom uh, that we're gonna see. But I think they're in a good spot right now and the discount that we've seen from the major fall in their stock price makes it pretty attractive for a long-term investment even though we won't be breaking off into the renewable part of their business for a couple years. So those are some of the renewable energy stocks I wanted to talk about today. I'm gonna to make another list talking about an updated list of stocks that I really like. This is just the, the carbon copy of what I talked about last year and I wanted to talk about it because renewable energy stocks have had a really tough time. As I mentioned, speculative stocks did really well in 2020. Green energy stocks and renewable energy stocks kind of get clumped into that because we're still a long way away from them being profitable. And now that we've seen kind of the switch to the safer stocks, Renewables have been hit pretty hard. As I mentioned, plug power down 64%, some of the others down like 20%. Renewables are not going to be a graph, something like a Microsoft or an Apple. It's gonna be very choppy, but I think in the long run, renewables are a great way to invest. And that's why it's the largest part of my portfolio right now. So let me know what you guys thought about my analysis of these companies and what your favorite type of renewable energy stock to buy is right now. Thanks for watching this video. I appreciate all the support and I will see you in the next episode.